Dear Father died 22nd December 1913 after a short illness of a week. Kia ora. I am the eldest, apparently, great grandchild of Andrew Rintel. So I get the pleasure of um, sharing with you on behalf of the Rintel family. Uh, my name is Chanel Clark. I am the curator Māori here at the Auckland Museum, Tamaki Painga Hira. It's this really large Pounamu Tsuki. Actually, was probably one of the first items from this entire rental collection that came into the museum. That was around 1894. It was lent um, for a display. So he recognised how important these pieces were, and he wanted to share them with the with the public. So Catherine. Rintol was given a letter to deliver to the Auckland Museum and she brought home the Tonga from Auckland Museum in 1906. Andrew Rintol passed in 1913 and so the care of his two collections, the collection of Māori Tonga and his collection of Kauri Gum, were overseen by his wife Catherine and by his sons uh, Alexander and Nedrick. Nedrick was killed in the First World War Catherine and Alexander deposited the collection again and the curator came up to the hermitage in Huarau and packed the Māori Tonga collection and took the whole uh, collection down to Auckland Museum where it has been since 1925. The Rintel family has, um, I guess, wanted to, saw the museum as helping to preserve it. The Rintel collection was uh, divided into two elements. Uh, one element was the Cody Gum collection, the second element was the Māori Tonga collection. Alexander and uh, Merv Sterling were uh, friends, and so they'd been talking about these two collections coming into the museum. And there's a newspaper article in um, 1967 that talks about uh, the discussions going on and how excited Alexander Rintol was about donating these collections of his father, Andrew, to the Cody Museum. So it's always been here at the Auckland Museum on what we call deposit, um, and we've looked after it. Um, and then, yeah, the um, Cody Museum kind of approached us, yeah, maybe about 2017, um, asking about the whereabouts of the rental collection um, and if it was still here, uh, which it was, and essentially looking to have it return home. Uh, we had the clock here at five, and we took the town up to Waimamaku, and we didn't have any kai till we uh, completed the burial up there. 
and so it's a no puku, it's a good practice to have, just in respect of these things. Kia ora. It's called Mate Fakatu Ka Muhio, Mate Muhio Ka Marama, Mate Marama Ka Matau, Mate Matau Ka Ora. Simply meaning from discussion comes understanding, from understanding comes knowledge, from knowledge comes wisdom, and from wisdom comes the essence of well-being for all mankind. Andrew, my great-grandfather, arrived from Scotland with his mum and dad, brother and two sisters in 1862 on the ship Hanover. He was just 12 years old when he jumped ashore at Matakoi. Andrew was a surveyor and a farmer. Bought land at Hurra, the farm my dad and brother farmed, and called Kukahuya, the Maori pa of that name just across the road. Andrew's other passion was a huge collection of kauri guns, beautifully polished and carved. As an artist himself, I believe he would have appreciated the craftsmanship of the Tuang, each of the carvings and pieces that were cleverly and beautifully crafted for cultivating the land, planting their crops, instruments for fishing, weaving, music, and so many other uses. Mm-hmm. 
The land was not what the settlers had been led to believe it was. And of course they arrived, there were no roads, and uh, they ended up heavily relying on the goodwill of the Māori to be their guides. Um, their walkers were their means of transport across the Kaipara, and their local knowledge, of course, in growing and sourcing food and valuable. In his travels, Andrew was gifted and collected the 162 pieces of Māori toanga that we are celebrating the return of today. And I think it's a fitting gift of um, Arawa from our family to yours. To give back to the iwi of Ngāti Whātua, the tribes, the iwi, who extended hospitality, generosity and invaluable help, not only to our great-grandfather, but to all the other pioneer families who settled in the Kaipara districts. I first heard of the, the rental taongas when I was appointed to the Kaumatua Kaunihera representing our marae in Waihoa back in about 2016-17. The importance of these taonga could be a real opportunity to create that working relationship between Māori and Pākehā within the museum, within the district and within the area. It's been a journey of hardship in terms of people not understanding the, the uh, probably afraid of tapu uh, that may be on those tonga. Um, but through process of karakia, kōrero, uh, and discussions amongst the people, the kaumātua and kuia especially, not only from Auckland, but from Whangarei, uh, from all around the district of Matakohe, Paparo, Maungaturoto, and all the ensuing marais, especially the Matua marae, Orua Faro, Otomatea, Waihaua, and Waikari, two way down in Poto, and that encompassed about um, 14 other different marae. So there was a big involvement of the community. And that involvement of the community brought, I believe, our people a lot closer, especially of um, coming together as Māori and Pākehā within the museum. I'm really excited because there's a lot of things that have happened there through these tonga. The fact that we now have our own area to display our tonga which was non-existent before um, and having to bring the tonga that's been sitting in the dark in Matakohe for the last 40 odd years and bringing them out into a situation where we can now display them in an open forum for the world to see not only for Pākehā and Māori within this district but the whole of New Zealand the whole of the world and I think that's really really exciting.
there was discussion around how revolutionary and groundbreaking the coding museum or the Automatia Cody and Pioneer Museum as it was then was. They were always pushing boundaries and that came from Mervyn Sterling's um, vision really. He was a uh, visionary, he was able to uh, bring the community together in a celebration of history and he brought all members of the community uh, on board who helped him to uh, achieve his vision, but he was always pushing new boundaries and taking the museum forward. He didn't rest on his laurels, he was always exploring new ways to make the museum shine. Lord and Heavenly Father, we gather here this time, giving you thanks once more for the safe return of these Tau. So we just ask that they will become a treasure for, for generations to come, mm. that they may see them, that they may understand them, and that they may know them as part of their history. Yeah. Our whanau are pleased that both now our great-grandfather's magnificent collections are now home and are going to be housed together. I love her, that these toonga are a part of our collective story on the Kaipara. That they not only shaped and influenced the stories of our ancestors, but that this story is still being written in and through our lives today. As kaitiaki of all of our toonga is that we uh, ensure the stories carry on, you know, and that's where we have to inspire young people to become involved in understanding what these taonga hold. I'm personally inspired by his faith, his courage, his tenacity and his perseverance. And I'm really proud of his respect and the relationships he formed with the Māori, his engagement with the language he spoke to Reo and their culture. And I'm so grateful that he left us with a good story, an inspiring story of mutual respect that he enjoyed with the Ngāti Whātua. Fortunately, now, today, we have these toonga, these collective stories of our early settlers in the Ngāti Whātua and that will continue to be heard through the generations. I'd like to finish off with this akarakia and it's about the call of the bird extending its invitation to the four corners of the world bringing us into this country kia piringi, piringa tahi tato, to come together as one ki te hikoi tahi tato, to walk together as one na kaputa tato ki te ao marama, and to come out as one into the world of enlightenment, into the world of unity. And uh, Karakia goes like this, Whakarongo ake rā ki te tangi a te manu, tui, 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 tui a i runga, tui a i daro, tui a i roto, tui a i waho, tui a te here tangata, kā rongo te pō, kā rongo te ao, tui a te muka tangata i tāke a mai i hawaiki nui, i hawaiki roa, I Hawaii ki pāma māo. Honoa ki te whei ao ki te ao mārama, a tihei e ua mauri ora. The bird is calling to the world, opening up this area for people to come, to be welcome into this area, to come together as one.